does more volume lead to more muscle growth? Hey everybody, welcome back to my channel. Today we're tackling one of the biggest debates in the fitness world, which is will doing more sets always lead to more muscle growth? You've probably heard that advanced lifters should be doing 20, 30, or even 40 sets per muscle group per week to maximize hypertrophy. Some coaches and even some researchers argue that there's already a scientific consensus that more volume equals more growth. But a recent review which I co-authored with colleagues at USF pushes back on that claim. In trained lifters, the evidence is far from settled and it's much more inconsistent than people realize. On top of this, a brand new meta-regression has given us perhaps the most comprehensive analysis yet of how volume relates to both hypertrophy and strength. And most recently, a narrative review that's come out introduced the concept of volume saturation, suggesting that there may be a point where doing more sets stops producing greater results and might even start working against you. So in today's video, I'm going to unpack all of this. I'll look at where the evidence for high volume is strong, where it falls short, and how the latest research is changing the way we think about the role of training volume in muscle growth. So let's start with some background. Training volume, which is often defined as the total weekly number of sets for a given muscle group, is one of the most widely discussed variables in program design. Many training guidelines emphasize it as the single most important factor for hypertrophy, placing it above load, intensity, or even frequency. This has led to the popular and perhaps somewhat true idea that higher weekly set volume will reliably produce more muscle growth. But how strong is the evidence for this statement? In particular, how strong is the evidence for resistance trained individuals, the group of people that I am most interested in? Surprisingly, the data is less clear than you might imagine. That's why these recent papers are so important, yet nobody is talking about them. Each of these papers attempts to clarify how much volume actually matters in people who already lift. Now, the first paper that I'm going to cover today wasn't a traditional randomized control trial, but rather a narrative style review. Buckner and colleagues, which is a paper that I co-authored, examined studies that compared different sets of volumes specifically in trained lifters. The goal was to determine whether a consistent dose-response relationship really exists in the current literature. That is, whether more sets consistently leads to more muscle growth in experienced lifters when compared to a group or conditions performing less overall volume. Importantly, much of our goal was to help people focus on the magnitude of change typically observed in muscle growth research, using volume as the vehicle for the discussion. Now, when looking at the body of evidence, several well-controlled studies actually failed to show an advantage for higher volumes. In one study by Heelgraves and colleagues, lifters were assigned to perform either 9, 18 or 27 weekly sets for their biceps. While all groups saw small increases in muscle thickness ranging from 0.1 to 0.3 centimeters, the differences between the groups were not statistically significant. Another 10-week study by Ostrowski and colleagues compared groups performing either 3, 6 or 12 weekly sets per muscle group. Again, there were small increases across the board, but no meaningful differences between volumes. Even in studies that use notoriously high volume approaches like German volume training with 10 sets of 10 repetitions, the results showed no clear advantage over more volume protocols. These findings suggest that doing more sets does not always translate into more growth in resistance trained individuals. On the other hand, there are studies that appear to support a more traditional dose response relationship between volume and hypertrophy. One particularly well-known study by Schoenfeld and colleagues published in 2019 reported that after just eight weeks, thigh muscle thickness increased by roughly 0.29 centimeters in the low volume group, 0.46 centimeters in the moderate volume group, and an impressive 0.72 centimeters in the high volume group. At first glance, this looks like clear evidence that more sets equals more muscle. The case for volume is also echoed in studies on rest periods by the same group of researchers. When lifters are given longer rest between sets, they are often able to complete more total training volume. And in some of these experiments, that extra volume has been linked to greater muscle growth. This seems to reinforce the idea that accumulating more sets and reps can drive hypertrophy. But here's where we need to be cautious. Some of these studies have reported unusually large increases in muscle size, far larger than what's normally seen in resistance training research. 
For trained lifters, typical growth over eight to 12 weeks tends to be in the range of 0.2 to 0.3 centimeters, not double or triple the amount, which is what some of these studies have shown. This raises the possibility that what looks like a powerful effect of volume may instead reflect the possibility of either short-term swelling, measurement error, or methodological differences between labs rather than true long-term hypertrophy. And this brings us to the key question. Why do some studies show such clear benefits in high volume while others show no advantage at all? Our review, which is the paper by Buckner and colleagues, suggests that this is part due to the methodology. Without control groups, it can be difficult to separate genuine muscle growth from error in ultrasound measurements. On top of that, different labs often use slightly different techniques to collect and analyze data, which can amplify these inconsistencies. But of course, it's also possible that in some contexts, higher volumes really do provide added benefit, depending on the training design or the characteristics of the participants. But overall, the variability in findings makes it hard to claim that more volume is always better. So in moving beyond the inconsistencies of these individual studies, we can actually look to a recent meta-regression published in late 2024 by Joshua Pelland and colleagues. This paper is a comprehensive analysis of resistance training dose response to date, combining several studies and more than 2,000 participants. A major innovation in this work was distinguishing the difference between direct sets like bicep curls for biceps and indirect sets like a row that only partially involves the bicep. By applying fractional methods, the researchers counted indirect sets as a half, which can give a clearer estimate of the true training volume or dose. The results showed a consistent relationship between training volume and hypertrophy. As weekly set volume increased, muscle growth also increased. However, the relationship followed a pattern of diminishing returns. The biggest improvements came from the first few sets, with the minimum effective dose estimated at about four sets per muscle group per week. The most efficient range appeared to be around five to 10 sets per muscle group per week, where each added set still produced meaningful results. Now with higher volumes, there was less certainty for the relationship between volume and growth. Furthermore, there is a scarcity of studies utilizing these exceptionally high volumes above 25 weekly sets, which limits the ability to draw strong conclusions. Now for strength, this pattern was even more striking. Volume increased strength only up to a certain point, but the curve flattened out very quickly, essentially plateauing at a much lower volume but with little benefit of going higher. Now, the most recent addition to this discussion comes from a narrative review by Camargo and colleagues in 2025, which focuses on the concept of volume saturation. This idea suggests that there is a point at which doing more sets stops providing additional benefit, and beyond which, extra volume may even be counterproductive. Camargo and colleagues point out that the inconsistencies in the dose response literature may be explained by both mechanistic and methodological factors. Mechanistically, muscle protein synthesis does not rise indefinitely with more sets, and recovery demands, neural fatigue, and other factors all place natural limits on the benefits of high volume training. Methodologically, differences in how studies calculate and report training volume, as well as inconsistencies in how hypertrophy is measured, makes it rather difficult to compare results directly. Ultimately, the authors conclude that while volume is a key driver of hypertrophy, there may be a saturation point beyond which additional sets no longer contribute meaningfully to growth. At that point, it may be wiser to focus on other training variables like your intensity, exercise selection or proximity to failure while keeping volume within a challenging but recoverable range. So where does all of this leave us? The big picture is that training volume is clearly an important driver of muscle growth, but the story is far more complicated than simply saying more sets always equals more gains. The review by Buckner, Marino and myself reminds us that the evidence in trained lifters is inconsistent, with many carefully controlled studies showing little or no added benefit from piling on extra sets. Now, the meta-regression by Pelland and colleagues helps clarify that inconsistency, showing that both hypertrophy and strength do increase with more volume, but in a pattern of diminishing returns. Most of the benefits are realized with a moderate number of weekly sets, and beyond that, each additional set contributes less and less, especially when it comes to strength. 
Finally, the narrative review by Camargo and colleagues adds a mechanistic layer, emphasizing that there is likely a saturation point where the muscle simply cannot respond to more sets and where the cost and recovery may actually outweigh the potential benefits. What this means in practice is that lifters likely don't need extremely high volume programs to maximize their training results. For most people, keeping weekly volume in a moderate range of 10 to 15 sets per muscle group per week seems to strike the best balance between stimulus and recovery. Beyond that, our muscle gains are smaller, so focusing on other variables like intensity, exercise selection, or training quality may be more effective than endlessly adding more sets. In short, while volume is incredibly important, the current body of research suggests that until more consistent evidence emerges to support high volume training in experienced lifters, simply increasing volume may not always yield better results. Now, I'd love to hear from you all. Are you someone who thrives on higher volumes or do you see your best gains with a more moderate approach? Feel free to drop your experiences in the comments below. Now, if you'd like to support my channel, I invite you to explore my recent book publication, The Complete Exercise Guide to Muscle Hypertrophy. This comprehensive resource will improve your understanding of muscle growth, detailing the mechanisms behind muscle development, the role of hormones, an in-depth discussion on muscle memory, rest periods, volume, sex differences, and so much more. Priced at just $59, it offers a graduate level education at exceptional value. To purchase your copy, please visit my website. And if you found this breakdown helpful, please don't forget to like the video, subscribe to my channel, and hit that notification bell so you don't miss my next deep dive into the latest research on training and nutrition. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you in my next video.